Welcome to my first video. I'm impelled to make this account, giving an alternative perspective to scientific articles, faithful traditionalists, and spiritual scholars who have been warning us on the upcoming eclipse of March 29th, 2025. I am aware my videos will be categorized similarly. I will show some information they have not shown. Some modern scholars seem to believe that this is going to be an end of an era, or an age, or an epic, or a yuga, and what events may occur. And while I champion their offerings of notice for the greater good, and they are correct in disaster forecast, which will occur, and precautions should be made, there are a few key gaps they leave open in their interpretation. I adhere more towards a greater range of ancient knowledge, as traditional knowledge has been compartmentalized over time. I do hereby give my respect to those scholars, but this video is the first in a series of videos laying out as much knowledge on an introductory yet involved demonstration of evidence attempting to correct and add to our mass thinking or zeitgeist to define what is about to happen for our children and the next generation, as they deserve better than those who are in their 50s now like me, who thought we knew the world but were blindsided by events, just as our parents and grandparents were. Who would we be if no one said anything? Well, this is a series of videos designed to build up the case of karma and its pivotal role in our lives. Let's look at the historical importance of these events. Here's an article uh, published uh, relatively recently in uh, 1994 called the Quintuple Planetary Groupings. That's the group of five planetary groupings. Rarity, Historical Events, and Popular Beliefs by Salvo de Mice and Jean Mius. Groupings of the five naked-eyed planets have a great importance in the ancient history of mankind and of astronomy. Their rarity is studied and some major events are examined. A table of events from negative 3101, the year negative 3101 to positive 2735 is appended. Now, let's see, we have, this goes into explaining uh, the importance, but on this page, they give, They give data. Negative 3101 is where they begin. And this is the years of elapsed until the next one of five planetary groupings. 136 years, 98 years, 41, almost 20, just over 40, 40, 60, 78, and then 2 after 78, and then 156, 140, and as they go along, and this here is the degrees of separation. 40 degrees, which means it spans a whole 30-degree uh, sign, at least not centered, but within the 30-degree th range, plus 10 more degrees. 20 degrees, so it could, this could be within a sign and then 18, but this not necessarily, 18, 15, and so on and so forth. And as you see, from negative 3101, they go, they go to today, which is here. The next one is in 2040, and then it goes from here on out. But as you see, the range goes from almost... 190 years to very uh, long periods to short periods and then long periods again and then a medium range so this is the pattern that they're showing and that these events lead to a psychological impact in ancient times when daily observations of the sky 
was used to derive the proper times for rites and seasonal works and exploited celest and as they exploited celestial signs okay chronicles writers and historians have often conveyed more or less real events but without any control of the information as they have even distorted dates causes and catas catastrophic events only one needs to think of jupiter saturn conjunctions known since Babylonian times and feared until modern times. So there is a psychological impact to these events. Now, the only way to see it is if someone shows it to you. Then you see it. I mean, these the tracking of these multiple conjunctions uh, goes back for thousands of years. And this is five planetary groupings. What we're talking, this doesn't include the possibility of another uh, component to that, which I'll get to in a moment. And it is, and what the upcoming one is at least six. Uh, five visible with one uh, invisible. And it's rare for a six or seven planets to converge in one sign, though it has been happening more frequently in, in recent years, almost like a buildup. <clears throat> Especially since the last Saturn-Jupiter conjunction of 2020. Which happened here on December 21st of 2020 Saturn and Jupiter were conjunct in Capricorn right there ahead of the Sun So on Christmas of 2020, which most of us remember, and should remember this, Saturn and Jupiter were conjunct. This was the great conjunction of 2020. Now, oops, not yet, all right. Now this event, is going to be a rare and special event taking place on March 29th of 2025. Here is the event here. March 29th, 2025. This is sunrise in Eastern Standard Time, New York, Boston, Philadelphia. So it'll be a, it is the first new moon after the vernal equinox so that nine days previous on the 20th we reached according to stellarium we reached the vernal equinox or the spring solstice uh, spring equinox rather spring equinox the it's the beginning of the new year for crops and for life on earth rather than our calendar but on the 29th we have a convergence <clears throat> of the Sun and the moon Venus Mercury and Saturn one two three four five now I said six or seven where is six or seven well over here Go to our search window, and we'll look for Neptune. Neptune is right there. This is one of the invisible planets that won't be seen, but it's still there. So this one is six. Now, where is seven? I'll get to that later, but it is there. Now, nothing will happen on this day. 
as they don't, don't as they don't want us to discuss world events around eclipses, <clears throat> else risk us figuring their plans with every one of these events, adding to our data, and we begin cracking their code as they don't want us to understand their game. But these eclipses are our windows of opportunity where we concentrate on our goals to strengthen our wills. That's where the phases of the new moon comes, where it goes around and when it reaches the other side, it's a full moon. That means that we struggled and this is our, this is our time when we can, how should I say, um, take the most of it, make the most of embracing it, and then we rest until it comes back around to the next cycle. At least that's the beginning of it. You don't do that all the time. But that's the basic idea of it. And it's supposed to sh strengthen our wills to stand up against where we as individuals and as people, as men and women, stand up against the impositions against us. Not as Americans or any other national identity, but as men and women. The eclipse is a buildup of light which culminates for 14 days before our rest period begins on the full moon and where we take a breather. And this, again, this isn't uh, the only routine, but it's the beginning routine before you understand all the cycles. This is a way to strengthen your will to move past having to, to continue to do this cycle. But it's, 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 that's how you begin. But this is the time you'll see it as a welcoming part. This is the, the time that you see things as a welcoming part of life rather than, rather than just uh, problem after problem after problem. Now, let me see about time. I'm just good on time. All right. This opportunity won't be wasted by a disaster on this day. Instead of doing a disaster on an eclipse, they use it as a herald for what is going to come later in the year, teasing us with coincidence facts like JFK and Lincoln assassination coincidences, as if to say, we tried to tell you. It's not our fault you didn't listen. They will give us a disaster, expecting us to focus on that event in the public consciousness of the news. And uh, events like this happened recently. Let's go here. Uh, as recently as December 26 of 2019 was the start. This did the day. This was the day of the start, basic start of the COVID outbreak. Cases of COVID started appearing just before 2020 in December, of, in December, and that's why it's called COVID-19, so it can get into this state, and they got it as close as they could, where you have uh, this chart here, it's easier to see, uh, it's easier to see the, the, the separations of the signs, Mercury, Sun, Jupiter, Moon, Saturn, with Pluto there. Now this is one, two, three, four, five. I wonder why this date wasn't listed here. Even though it was published in 1994, I still wonder why. So, as soon as coming, I have to stop this, but... Uh, this is the date when they started the COVID, and and this date, February 10th, is when the mask policies were lightened. Both instances were of rare, of recent six or seven planetary, where are we at, February, yes, six or seven planetary um, convergences in one sign. You see, February 9th. 2019, 2021, 2021, 